All right, welcome to another video. Basically today we're gonna be upgrading vCenter server 8.0 update one over to the latest 8.0 update two, which just recently came out. So what I wanna kinda of show you first is differences from vCenter server seven to eight. So what you're seeing here is seven and when you have the vCenter highlighted here under an inventory, you'll see under updates that you've got vCenter server and you have an update planner, which is great. It'll check for what available updates are there and you can read up on them. However, with 8.0 update one, you now have an option to start kind of like, it's, they call it reduced time upgrade where you can plan your upgrade and then perform the switch over so that you can minimize downtime, right? For those folks that are using vCenter. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, there's a couple of prerequisites, a couple of things I've done here. And one of them is to download the vCenter server ISO, the 8.0 update two. And then we're gonna mount that to the vCenter itself. So we do have it. I do have it on a NFS share here. And there it is right there, our 802 ISO. Let's get it connected. Okay, and one other prerequisite that we've also done is just like other vCenter upgrades where it deploys out a new appliance, I've went ahead and reserved a temporary IP and a temporary DNS name as well, just to prepare us. So let's go back to our update and we can see here, this is our current version and we're gonna see what version is available. Uh-huh, just as we expected. And of course, always read the release notes. So what I love about these pre-checks, that it'll go through pre-checks and interoperability checks. It says here, a file-based backup was performed about you know seven hours or so ago. And we can confirm that here, basically by going into the VAMI itself, and we can see that there were backups done. I'm gonna to go to the last page here, but a manual backup was performed and it was complete. So that's great. You know, definitely have these as an additional, as a backup method, in additional to a snapshot and even a full backup from your backup solution. Now, what's also nice is product interoperability on this part here, I know I have NSX integrated with my vCenter, so my version of NSX is not at the latest, but it is at a supported version for 8.0 U2. So I'm all good here. I will tackle those as I go. I do have cl clusters containing hosts with different versions as well. So I will go ahead and proceed to the next section. I will validate that I did back up. The next part will be a vCenter Server Lifecycle Manager plugin that requires upgrading. So we'll go ahead and kick that off here. And a staging process is taking place. And as you can see, preparing system for up update. We will let this go through. And by the way, I am periodically pausing just to help fast forward things. Uh, things are moving along here, as you can see, installing packages. And you'll begin seeing prompts here about plugins being undeployed, plugins being redeployed to satisfy that new version. So, and you can see here in the recent tasks as well. And this is almost nearing completion. All right, so it says installation was successful. Looks like it's doing a reload here. And we'll go ahead and go back to the upgrade section here. This did come up saying, hey, there's updates, which I believe this should take us to the actual upgrade section and let us continue. So we're gonna go ahead and go to next here. Now that it, the plugin should be there. Now we're gonna configure the target appliance. It's gonna deploy a new appliance. We'll agree to all that. Target location, we're gonna keep it the same as the source, that's fine with me. It's gonna keep it, obviously it's taking all the 
the deployment size is going to remain the same, the network is on the same. So we'll call this one vCenter01, just as a, oh, we'll call it VC temp actually, because that's what my FQDN is. And I'll go ahead and apply a temporary password. And again, this is only the virtual machine. Oh, look at that. Okay, cool, now they match. All right, now we got our network settings. So I will go ahead and do, I did VC temp. All right, and then we'll get our gateway in there. DNS server, got, got it, all that looks good. And this is key, we do want to select the right port group, otherwise the vCenter will not be available after installation. It's gonna to try to come up for the second part of the, um, Upgrade. So I will go ahead and select the right port group. And we're going to click next and finish. So next step should be let's go. Now that we've done that, okay, prepare upgrade. Excellent. So Let's do start upgrade. This part should start kicking off the OVA install. So it's taking that ISO and it should start deploying off of that, a, a new vCenter instance. So we should have a VC temp VM appear here in our inventory. So there goes our VC temp that just got created. And I'm sure it's gonna go through right now and actually do the deployment and the setup of that new appliance. All right, so step part one of step five did complete successfully where the temporary vCenter is deployed. As you can see here, we've got a VC temp and it's got my temporary IP address. Tools is doing a great job resolving DNS there and let's go back. Now, I am in position where I'm ready to just perform the migration. Now this has so far been non-disruptive to anyone that's using vCenter, right? And just as another FYI, ensure to always read the release notes and that this, this reduced time up, upgrade is only supported for self-managed, single self-managed vCenters. It's not supported for vCenters that are leveraging vCenter server HA or enhanced link mode. So upgrade prep is completed. I will now perform switch over. We will see what happens. Okay, so I did step away for a moment and I'm getting prompted for login credentials. Now, it's not being very specific, which, so let's try, I don't think it's gonna be root, but let's try it. Oh, give me a moment here. Okay, so those credentials were to authenticate to the actual appliance itself. So it was the root. And as you can see here, switch over completed. Open a vSphere client. Okay, here we made it to our login, so that's a good sign. And we'll go ahead and log in with our local SSO. We did open up a new window. So we'll go ahead out of that. Wait for this to load. Our VAMI should show an updated version. So we're going to refresh this and see what our VAMI looks like. Well, we'll go ahead and log in. With admin local on here and look at that 802. We're in business. 
So you could tell there's some updates to icon graphics. And then, oh, look at that. Well, we are on 802 officially, and our upgrade did complete successfully. As we can see, our old vCenter appliance is powered off. We can definitely leave it powered off, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually rename it to old. Everyone loves using old. And then VC temp, what we'll do is rename this one. I want the object to be renamed to vCenter. So now obviously your VMDK files for this vCenter are going to remain as VC temp. A storage vMotion will need to be completed in order for that to be renamed. And we should be in business here. We can bring up our console, see what it looks like. Right, look at that. And yeah, I'm seeing here that the FQDN of the vCenter is called VC temp now. So I need to look into that. Okay, so the fix for the console for the vCenter appliance displaying the temporary name that we used, VC temp, the fix is simply rebooting the vCenter appliance and it actually restored. Now, obviously, it was responding. It's still hitting the same FQDN, the name. So, and yeah, we're done. We're upgraded. So, Carry on, ensure to always read the release notes. Feel free to use this as a guide. Open up a proactive support case if you have S360 with VMware. And good luck on your journey.